children of God. And it says this about the saints. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, which is what Jesus did, and the word of their testimony, what comes out of their mouths. Glory to God. You are not a defeated people. You are strong in the Lord and the power of his great might. Amen. You can sing ugly and still power goes out. Amen. You have permission to sing ugly. If you sing talk, sing talk. If you sing mumble, mumble, but let's do it together. For where they come in together in one accord, I'm right there in the midst. Matthew 18, 19. Whatever they would agree upon is touching anything. Not only would I be there, but I'll do it. He says to the church, oh yes, he says, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Lord, thank you in Jesus' name for the releasing of the voices of the children of God. In Jesus' name, thank you for the atmosphere of heaven. Lord, we pray that even right now. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on this earth just like it is in heaven. We glorify you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you. You are most high. You are blessed. Can you just praise him? Even if you just say, Lord, you're good, say that. Lord, you're so good. You're above all things. You're above all things. You are above all things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So this week I had a bit of a temper tantrum. I was recklessly driving on our quad and I was ripping through a field going way faster than I should have. And then I ended up going into our neighbor's um, trails. And as I was in the trails, I started just releasing just the tears, the crying, the shouting, the yelling. And I was yelling at the devil for getting off my family. Get off of me. Get off my marriage. Get off my health. Get off of our our town, our church, our village, our country. Just get get off, devil. And I'm pretty sure that our neighbors have trail cams, so they could be interesting <laughs> when they get their trail cams. But I know that I saw this, a friend, I was, I was telling a friend of mine my story of me having my temper tantrum, and she saw a picture of this little kitten, and behind this little kitten was this big, huge, massive lion roaring. So my roar might have been small, but the devil or the angels and the Jesus and God behind me were roaring like crazy. And he was definitely stomping on that devil's face. And we thank you, Lord, that that devil has to run in the name of Jesus and that we have the power to release life. We have the authority to release life. We have the dominion over anything and we can trample over anything that comes our ways. 
Thank you, Lord, for protecting our marriages, our health, our finances, our kids. Devil, get off of our kids right now in Jesus' name. Get off of your people. There is no depression in Jesus' name. We wipe down depression. We wipe down all of the hopelessness. We wipe off addictions. We take off all of this big C word that is, there is no other God before you, Lord. There is no other God before you. And we have put this stupid C word above everything all around. And we just ask in the name of Jesus that we put you first and that we focus on you and we don't lose our path, Lord, and our focus is on you. And we set our eyes on the prize. And you are good. You are such a good God. And I love you. And we love you. And we sing your name. It is a sacrifice of praise. But we just love to praise to you. Because we do replace the spirit of mourning and sadness and grief with the spirit of hope and a garment of praise. And we will praise your holy name all of our days, Lord. And we will not hear what the devil has to say because he is a liar and we are going to believe what you say we are we're going to believe what you say that what we have all the psalms 91 and every single thing that we have in your word that we can stand on and we declare it over all of us right now in jesus name sometimes the power is in the worship Sometimes it's in the testimony of the worship, but it's still worship. Thank you, Lord. It's the God of peace, he says, who will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Wait, that's a place for a good amen. Say amen. Actually, let's say amen. Say amen. Amen. We were, yesterday when we were driving, talking about passion and joy being in his presence and uh, a lady was going to pass me in her large Dodge pickup so you know that the spirit of God's on me when I let anyone pass me so just letting you know that's how much presence of God was in my car that was serious stuff yeah so she she pulls out to pass and we're just we just feel the peace of God and as she's pulling out to pass someone pulls out of their driveway right at right at her so and she's doing i don't know what 30 something like that i don't know so we just pull over and she, i don't know if she saw us pulling over or not but she panicked and she no accident thank you lord jesus i i attribute that to the peace of god but she got ahead of us for maybe two seconds and signaled over and pulled over and just was a mess, an absolute mess. She was covered on her steering wheel like this and just shaking like that. We're in extreme times. And it, it just struck me. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence and your peace. That, yeah, yeah, it guards us. But that lady was guarded because of the presence of God that was with us and in us. And that's the time that we're in. Where, though you don't feel like it, you praise and you push and you find his presence. And it's not just that you're doing well. And he promises, now you're going to do well. I got you all the way through these extreme times. But there's people who are going to benefit just because you press in. Amen. right there. Jeremiah says this, all of life, all of it, from right here, there. He says all the issues of life, right, right here. If this is working, still working, then my goodness, how blessed you are. And sometimes to get this working, you got to go through some ugly. Can you get an amen? Amen. Woo! all the way through. We've been through an amazing season where things are getting stirred up that no one wanted to deal with, but we're all dealing with. Glory to God. And this thing is starting to work again. And it gets angry. As a testimony from 
<laughs> from Sylvia. It gets angry sometimes and it gets frustrated and it wants to shout out, shout out! And it wants things set right. That's, a, that's called a cleansing. When you, when, you, when you stir up gold to get it purified, all the dross always comes to the top. God's good with it. and some of us are just have been quiet for too long and I think about harmonies and I think of how amazing they sound and they're all different voices blending together to make one they're not all at the same forgive my terminology I don't know the right words but I know that to sing a harmony you either sing one note higher one note lower and then there are others that will sing a harmony with you double harmonies and they go on in those things and and I think of not all of us are called to be on a soapbox. I actually wonder if any of us are called to be on a soapbox. But I think of how consistent we can be when we know who we serve. Perilous times we're in. There's all kinds of choices. The choices right now have been narrowing. It's, you know, you could say you're the unvaccinated, you're the vaccinated. What about the saints? and the sinners what about that so I'm going to remind you saints and I there's also an anointing in here right now um, because the Lord Jesus is in here and if you feel that there's something blocking you from Jesus then you just march your little legs right up here and get right with him whatever that takes whatever that looks like and check that box off don't wait don't leave but I wanted to read this as soon as he's She's still going to read it. I, I need to tell you something. The, the days of the of checking off the box, they're, they're just, there's no life in them. And the days of worship looks like this, 2.5 songs, and then we do this and then we do that. I'm sorry, but those days, are they're, they're, we're doing what Jesus wants to do. And I, I'm not going to apologize for Jesus. I'm not. This, this structure in the church, thank you, Lord. It served a wonderful period and a wonderful time. But if you want to go back to the structure, it never was that. So maybe what we're doing is just coming back to the original plan. Thank you, Lord. Rachel, are you able to pull up 2 Corinthians 4, 8? Oh, come on then. Why, why me just read it when we can all read it together? Hallelujah. Hang in there. God's got you. Do you have a New King James Version? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Lord. No, Corinthians. Second. Yeah. What did I say? Second Corinthians? Okay. Second Corinthians 4, 8. We, you got that? Oh, what a woman. Okay. Say with me. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Don't go on yet. Just wait. Just wait. We got to go back to that one because we've just read it. Now we, we heard it. Now we really need to believe it. Okay. Here we go again. And I don't want you to hurry up through it. This is a declaration over your life in the space that we're in. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Do you have the next verse? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we so need to remember this. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. And so, Lord, you hear your word coming from your people. And I declare, Lord, in a quiet voice and in a loud voice, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Lord, the times are perilous. You know it. But you are rising up that fire inside of those who know you and those that are soon to know you in Jesus' name. Lord, 
we follow what we are able to the best of our abilities. We'll wear a mask when we need to wear a mask. We'll do what we need to do, but we will not forsake you. We will not shrink back. We will not stop believing that your name is the name above all names. And so even on our on-air people, I release the name of Jesus over your life and over your household. Over people in this space, I release the name of Jesus. His name is the name above all things. Do not forsake the name of Jesus. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That's his word. He is greater than science. He is greater than the air that we breathe. He is greater than the dawn in the morning and the sunset at night. He is greater than all things. He is greater than the circumstances you are in right now. He is greater. He is greater. He is greater. And you're his. that Jesus is in your heart, I just want you to say, I'm his. I'm his. I do not belong to COVID. I am not run around the planet by COVID. I do not run. But I live every day by faith. And my God says, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so for those of you online, if you're thinking this is wild, you're right, it is, because we're in wild times. I want to encourage you to get right with Jesus. Do you know what that means? That means if you feel that you have joined any one camp, if you have joined in any sort of divisions, stop. Just stop. Repent means turn from it. If you feel that your life, you're better than any other person, you're wrong. Jesus went to the cross for every one of us. He went to the cross for the masked and the unmasked, for the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Jesus is not wrenching his hands over who's vaccinated and who's not vaccinated, but he is looking at our hearts. Amen? There's there's never been a time like now where he's drawn you and me back to family and and your senses would think well this is the wrong time I mean we should be doing this or doing that but he's drawing us back as sons and daughters back to trusting him again that's where we're coming back to and things are going to move out of the way division's going to move out of the way fear of, of this or that it's going to move out of the way we're coming back to being sons and daughters and you're always welcome in his presence and there's no better place to be there's no safer place to be than in his presence thank you lord thank you lord amen amen hallelujah so take a nice deep breath that's just the worship portion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tough things need to be said, but you know what? Uh, you can always say them kindly. Amen. And so if you want to wear a mask, I will love you. If you don't want to wear a mask, I will love you. If you are vaccinated, I will love you. If you are half vaccinated, I will love you. If you are not vaccinated, I will love you. I think that covers everybody. Praise the Lord that we don't have seven different types of things that we need to say. I love you if you are. I love you if you are the L, the G, the B, the T, the Q, and L, the P. I love you from A to Z. How about that? Let's live that way. awesome church. If you have a Facebook app, could you open up the church app and we would love you to share the gospel today. And it looks like the share button on your Facebook feed. And those of you online, would you share it? We really do believe that the message of the Lord needs to get out there. 
in every way possible. So, election day tomorrow. <laughs> Won't it be nice to be done the election day tomorrow? <laughs> Hallelujah. We uh, have been talking about um, Fatine. It's called The Cry. Uh, and she, for 21 days, they had called a fast. And they had put together this um, prayer, which is a 154-word prayer, which speaks of the years of Canada in Confederation. So I'm going to read this prayer. And it's, I, you know what? I'm going to, what am I going to do, Lord? I'm going to give you some space. This is the... Uh, this is one of the best prayers. You, you ever feel like sometimes you just can't put your words together right? Like the prayer just doesn't sound right? This one sounds right. It echoes in my heart that it's everything that I desire for Canada. It's everything that I desire for every level of leadership in our, our local government here in Lac La Biche, our provincial government, our federal government. This is the prayer, and I'll... Um, I'm going to read it twice. I'm going to read it once so you can hear it, and I'm going to read it the second time so you can agree with it. Okay? So we magnify the name of Jesus over Canada, and we declare that our trust is in you and you alone. We humble ourselves before you in repentance for our many grievous sins and plead your blood over our land. In this election, we pray you would cause us to elect candidates whose hearts are soft to your will who will stand for righteousness and who will have wisdom to govern Canada in these times. We pray that you would remove those who do not have your heart or wisdom to govern Canada for the sake of our children and future generations. We ask that you would release great honor for your word upon all of Canada, that you would expose corruption in government and that you would convict Canadians from sea to sea to turn to you with all their hearts, souls, mind, and strength. We thank you for your mercy and grace. Amen. Isn't that good? Okay, so I prayed it for your head to hear it, and now I'm going to pray it again. And if you agree with me, I'd love for you to stand. And if you don't agree, don't stand. It's okay. I love you. We've already established the love connection. Stand, don't stand, whatever. But we're going to stand on guard for thee. And we're going to pray this. And so I want you to put your hand on your heart. I want you to pray it from your heart. Agree with me from your heart. We magnify the name of Jesus over Canada and declare our trust is in you and you alone, O Lord. We humble ourselves before you in repentance for our many grievous sins and plead your blood over our land. In this election, we pray you would cause us to elect candidates whose hearts are soft to your will, who will stand for righteousness and who will have wisdom to govern Canada in these times. We pray that you would remove those who do not have your heart or wisdom to govern Canada for the sake of our children. And future generations, we ask that you would release great honor for your word upon all of Canada, that you would expose corruption in government in every level, and that you would convict Canadians from sea to sea to turn to you with all their hearts, souls, mind, and strength. We thank you for your grace and mercy. In the name of Jesus, everyone says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you may be seated. Thank you. So that's election day tomorrow. So if you have not already voted, go on and do that and let your voice be heard, whether it's a whisper or a shout. And just take that prayer into if you're not sure who to. Say, Lord, who has a, a soft heart and a surrendered will to you? Vote for them. Who has the wisdom to govern Canada in this time? Amen. I just love it because it doesn't say it's liberal or anti-liberal or conservative or anti-conservative or it doesn't say any of that. It just talks about the heart. And I love that. That's how Jesus is. Amen. Amen. So many messages and services already. So uh, we started our Bible study on Wednesday and this is the book that we started. It's a Zoom study. We have, um, I think we might only have 10 more copies left and they're 20 bucks a book. 
if you're able, whether you're able to make the study or not, I would recommend this book. Um, Darren and I have spent all summer long going through it. It's called The Cure. And it says, what if God isn't who you think he is and neither are you? And it pulls out all kinds of gobbledygook garbage that we have collected our whole lifetime on who we think God is. And uh, the Bible study is actually called Two Roads, and it goes into um, a little bit more, a lot more detail, actually. If there is two roads, one is pleasing God, and one is trusting God. What? They both sound good. They are. But if you want to know the difference of the context of those, get the book, join the study, and we, uh, we have three more Wednesdays that we are going to do that. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday is uh, Sonia's last Sunday in Canada, and we we're hoping to do like a nice big shin dig, but there's going to be less shin and less dig, I think. So we'll just kind of play it by ear on whether we're going to do that as a potluck or um, Sonia is going to be sharing a little bit next week as well and we'll be praying her off and all those wonderful things and hugs and stories and all of that and that's next Sunday and so we are hoping that you will register online until these restrictions lift and if you are not able to register then join us online it kind of seems like the way that we're in now doesn't it amen we also have started up Saturday night prayer again Sylvia is heading that up so if you're interested on praying from 7 till 7.30 for the Sunday service, contact her and she will connect with you. And she prays faithfully and gathers people. And so when she's out on the bush trails and she's crying out for her family, it turns out that you're her family as well. And not just you here, but the body of Christ is her family. And I'm so thankful that people are crazy enough to do that, Sylvia to cry on behalf of those who can't cry, to wave your fist at the air at God because you don't actually know, is he helping? To shout out for the people who can't shout out. What a gift. Let me remind you that you're sitting in the seat that you are today because somebody prayed for you. <laughs> yeah, so true, isn't it? Amen. So now for the fourth sermon of the day. And offering. I didn't. Thank you for the offering. Uh, we have uh, different ways. Most of the church in house uh, has been doing e transfer, which has been super helpful and it actually cuts the fees for the church. So thank you for that. Um, we also have a debit machine at the back, is where the books are. And so, Lord, I. it seems like there's always so much to say. But Lord, we can say what Sonia was singing is that you're so good. We declare your goodness over every person in here and online. We declare your goodness over their finances. We declare your goodness over their health, over their mental health, their physical health. We declare your goodness over their generosity. We declare your goodness over their eyes and their voice, over their very tender hearts. And we thank you for the ability to give, but also the ability to receive. So open up our hearts to receive from you through Pastor Darren. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Son. give the girls a hand for having the courage to come up and to worship. Well, I don't know. How about that? Do whatever you can. Lord, help us to do whatever we can to meet with you, to encourage counter you. God, help us stay away from entertainment. I don't, I don't mean television. I mean going to a church to be entertained and determining this entertainer is better. God, that your people would meet you. Lord, that we, we would meet you. Jesus, I pray today, whatever the words that go out, God, 
Let them be of you. Let them touch the hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. There's, there's, I can't tell you the amount of different directions that we can go. Or how many people I could point at and say, come and say this and say that. And we can go all these different directions. And we can go all these different things. And how many times I could... One of the worst images for a pastor is the, the image of people sitting in the chairs and what they want to hear. Sitting in my own prayer time or going over, Lord, what do I think they want to hear? Rather than Jesus, what do you want to speak to your people? Jesus. Sometimes it doesn't make you look popular. Amen? Seriously, leading into this, I mean, I'll go this direction. Oh, that's good. Or I hear someone speak something. Oh, that's good. Oh, or my favorite, you know, whatever it is. I, I had a slogan Jesus put in my heart, and it goes like this. Now, when I say man, I mean mankind, okay? So it's man, woman. Unless, unless a man encounters the Lord, they remain largely unchanged. Now, don't l listen to that and, oh, that's a value statement. This person's better than... No. It has nothing to do with that. In fact, it's probably the greatest invitation that can go out to people. doesn't mean you're not saved. There's, there's a difference between I'm going to heaven and a life that is absolutely... Hey, Rachel, please put up 2 Corinthians 5.17. See, it's coming as you speak. I don't know how many times I've been called upon and come up and say something. And it's just like Jesus told, sorry, God told Moses, just go. And when you go, I'll give you the words. And, and we're, we as a people think this, no, I'm not a, a pastor, a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher, whatever. I can't do those things because we witness someone else do something. If you really witness vulnerability, what happens to you is, I, I can do it too. Not the speaking part, the vulnerable part. That's the season we're in. And the messages that we really want come from Holy Spirit and someone who's willing to be vulnerable and say what needs to be said. And it's always in love. We do err not knowing who God really is because we've witnessed routine for so long. Or witnessed power preaching. I mean, who's made a mistake this week? Yeah, probably. Sure. And it turns out that's the people that God loves, came for. That's the people he calls family. That's a good place for an amen. That's like a freedom. That's me. Yay. We, we had went to uh, a small conference. Uh, where it is, you don't need to know because you probably judge. Yeah, regardless. There was beautiful flow of the Holy Spirit. Not much organized structure, but it was so beautiful and powerful. Everything flowed through surrendered people who were willing to surrender to Holy Spirit, and the messages were so good you couldn't even prepare for those and what it produced was vulnerability in people that by the way precedes salvation there, there's nothing I did or you did to get yourself saved nothing except for an awareness of oh god I need you in a moment and by the way it's the bible says it's the goodness of god that leads you to that moment. Yeah, but I confessed with my mouth. Yes, but you need to believe in your heart. He's so concerned with the heart. So there is this atmosphere of vulnerability. And then a call went out. And here's how the call went out. By an extremely vulnerable person who came up and grabbed the microphone and told a whole room full of leaders, pastors, and other peoples as well, all good peoples, no rank, 
no rank, that she had burnt out badly and ugly and couldn't be around people and didn't like people, didn't like her town, just wanted out. I'm going to speak this. If any of you have been sensing, I think I need to leave. Something's not right here. That is the war of the Holy Spirit and the war of the world right now. There is nothing better that, that Satan would love than for you to quit. And if he can't get you to quit by leaving, he'll make you quit just by drawing back. That's the war that's happening now. And I said it before, I'll say it again. This election is not about a party. This election is about souls. Because the atmosphere over Canada determines how easy it is, an in-season or an out-season, of who gets saved. So there's this vulnerability of this woman who gets up, and she is vulnerable as she's speaking. And I can't help. My, you, know, you, you know when your chin starts to quiver a little bit because you're going to bawl pretty soon, but you don't want to cry like that? But she led the way, and it took vulnerability to lead the way. And she confessed that all of this, it produced such bitterness in my heart. And she was angry at pastors and at leaders and everyone. Miserable. Couldn't receive, didn't know why she was miserable all the time. All this stuff. Until finally she broke. And just asked God, please forgive. And what it did was it produced with us an atmosphere of opportunity. Now, if we would have started this service and went like this, there is an opportunity for all you people who are bitter. Come on up. You would get zero. And if, it, if people went any direction, it would be that direction, out of the church. But when the presence of God was there, and through worship, and it softened the hearts of the people, because all the issues of life are right in there, and it softened all the people, then this woman came up out of honesty, spirit, and truth. That's true worship. Those who worship God must worship God in spirit and truth. But we're in a war of getting past all of our old ways and old things, and you do it like this, and you do it like that, and why does the worship look like this? God's after the heart. You feel it in your chairs. So we had to get closer. In I knew I had to, so did my wife. We, we had to get closer to the front. The scary part. And so this offer went out for the opportunity to let go of bitterness. Now, I, it's not like I have categorized bitterness in my heart. I have bitterness for this and this. Uh, there's no category. I just know that it's there. And I know there's an opportunity up there, but I don't know what it looks like, and I don't know what, what has to happen. Scary. So they open up the altar. Still scary. My wife is the first one to go. Dang. It opens up the way for other people. And then I, I do the, the Christian thing. I can receive from my chair. I can. Because my cape waves behind me. And then Holy Ghost is going like this. Because you hear the Lord. He's a still small voice. And he always leads you to triumph doesn't say he always leads you with your cape flying around and you always feel confident. Yeah, do, you, do you want this, Darren? Do you want this? Yeah. Yeah. Then come. Okay. Okay. I will. Can't tell you the feeling of family with, with a whole bunch of strangers that I didn't know. But you felt this is family. This, because people were willing, and they're open. Now, I'm not doing a comparison here. That was a war, and they've been warring over that for a long time. And the same thing, can it happen here? Totally, yeah, N without question. I'm absolutely confident. What does it take? Courage, vulnerability. That precedes salvation, by the way. Amen? Watched pastors go up there. I watched one for... 
50 minutes, his face right about there, and he never moved. His flaggers going all over the place. That's real Christianity. That vulnerable. That's who Jesus came from. Not, not, not the proper and got it all together. He didn't come for them. He, he said it too. I, I've, I've come for the ones who are sick. Those are the ones I've come for. And the ones who know that they're sick, I, they're real. I want them. I'm coming for them. I'm going to heal them. I'm going to raise them up. I'm going to use them. Woo. Boy, anointing on that. Wow. We watched, Angie and I, we used to, we used to really move in helping people get free. And, and, and we would pray for them. And I mean, like, in the moment, get free. When someone is, is aware that they're going through something and they're blocked, or, I mean, how many people of you, you're like this? You do good most of the time, but sometimes when you get around a person, you say things afterwards, you're like, why did I say that? Why did I act like that in front of that person? Why do I do that? And you want, you're kicking yourself afterwards. Why do I do that? Like that. And if you had a word for it, in those moments, if somebody said, are those moments a blessing to you or a cursing to you? Oh, man, it's, it's like a cursing. I wish I didn't act like that. I almost want to call them up and say, sorry, like that. So we would help people in prayer, especially the ones who go, like, there's something wrong. Like, I don't want to act like that anymore. And usually it's come from something happened to you. Usually it's words or sometimes it's physical action that happened to you and it stunts you. That's what an enemy does. He puts a curse in you, something traumatic that happens, and it puts a stunt in you. So by the time you get up to somebody or, or you're in some sort of an interaction, you're not even topically aware of it, but your soul is reacting to this because of something that's happened before. It's called a dart that the devil likes to shoot. And Jesus says in, in uh, Ephesians 6 to put on the full armor of God. And he gives you one of these as well. He says, with you is the shield of faith, which quenches every fiery dart of the wicked one. And that's a process. It's a walk of faith. It comes by believing Jesus loves you because in those curse moments, you feel not much value at all. It takes courage. And it was all preceded by worship, by softening of the hearts. And uh, we just said this in, in our prayer room before. There was an exceedingly brave, wonderful woman that we, that we met, just really awesome and quite successful as well. Just an awesome, awesome woman, so courageous. And worship happened. Not the, now we sing this one, now we sing that one. Worship has nothing to do with the song. It's got everything to do with the heart. Worship was phenomenal. People were drunk in the spirit. Their eyes were bloodshot. And all of them were happy. I mean, I joke about this, but after worship like that, no one walks out and goes, that sucked. Because God's presence and his joy was there and no one walked out, oh man, that problem I'm having or this or that or my mortgage. It was just such peace and contentment. But it also produces vulnerability. And so Angie just happened to start talking to this wonderful woman and she started to acknowledge that she's got a curse in her life. There's something that's been in her for a long time. I'm just walking by. And I, I'm just, I'm like, this wonderful presence here. I'm, man, I didn't want to go, but I'm so glad I went. Much like churches sometimes. Didn't want to go, but I'm so glad I went. I happened to walk by, and we see in part, and we know in part. And God's, God says, man, it's your eyes. It's, it's right in there. The eyes are the window of the soul, he says. You can see things spiritually. Let your spiritual eyes, eyes to see, ears to hear. Heart that perceives and understands. So I'm walking by and I'm seeing this lady, wonderful, courageous woman. It's like a big, big arrow is stuck in her. And she's already, her, her heart is soft. Soft. So Angela, they're, they're ministering and 
and I just say, I see this. I don't even know what they were talking about, but they'd already been talking about it. I said, I see this thing in your back, and she's acknowledging, yes, I know it's there. I know it. I said, I believe God wants to remove that thing. If you knew the freedom that he's given us and wants us to walk into, but we're bombarded with garbage daily. You're bombarded. Like, man, do yourself a favor and stay away from the news for a little bit. You're bombarded with it. How bad everything, garbage. We're so, it's so, man, it takes real diligence to focus on Jesus when everything else is fighting for your attention. She's like, man, this is the time I want to get free. And so we prayed, and I made sure that it was her will to be free, that we're not doing anything or leading or anything. Do you want this? Yes. Then let's ask Jesus to do this, and I will physically pull this out when you're ready. Yes. Let's do it. And so put my hands right there. Can you come up? Where her back would be like this. And boy, my hands really feel like I've got something here. She was on her chair, bent over. To the depth that you're willing to believe is the depth that you will have breakthrough. And you think, man, that's dumb Pentecostal garbage. I tell you what, in heaven, they're looking down when we're not faith-filled and going, man, that is dumb human garbage. Believe people, would you? Amen? So I said, are you ready? And she said, yeah. And so I just went like that and pulled that thing out. And I was expecting that that's all it was going to be. And I can tell you the howl that came out of that woman. Whew. Sheesh, we weren't ready for that, to that degree. She bent over in her chair and howled. Pain? No. For everything that had happened. And if you asked her mind, tell us what was happening. She, it, no, it was all from her heart how old for everything that had been done generationally to her and in a moment God broke her free that's dumb well go ahead and tell her that all things are possible for those who believe how old so much we're like oh you know you're looking around to see who's looking but everyone was saturated in worship, which precedes all of these things. How do you feel? I feel good. How's your back? I've never felt better. Why? Something was taken out. What the enemy is meant for evil, God always turns for good. Always. Unless a man encounters the Lord... You remain largely unchanged. Well, I'm waiting. Well, me too. And I tell you what, it takes courage. It always takes courage. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Stuff happens. But the violent take it by force. What does that look like? Punching in the air and stuff? Actually, it looks like courage when there's an altar call or a call out like that. Do you want to go? No. That's where the breakthrough is. Right there. I will look even more undignified than this, David said, that he may be free. And he was the greatest king that they have ever had. All the kings of Israel had access to the same scrolls, the same mandate, what a king does. They actually even had the examples before them of phenomenal kings, but the choice was always their own. Me being taught the word of God is one thing, 
but me pursuing God is all on me. What this world needs right now is vulnerable people. Amen? I still don't know what I'm going to preach. If, if, if you could comprehend the height and width and depth of love, that is faith. That's faith. That is your fight of faith. That's it. Uh, my fight of faith is not whether or not I can do super spiritual things like we did. And glory to God, she's set free. Glory to God. But my fight of faith preceded that. Do I have enough value to look like an idiot in this moment? Do I know Jesus enough? Have I spent enough time with him that I'm willing to look foolish for a moment? Or no way, I don't want people to. See, there, that's it. That's my fight of faith. Does he love me enough? Am I enough in Jesus that I can do things like that? Or is this just embarrassing and silly? That's your fight of faith. Not whether or not you belong in this place. You already do. You're already his children. Done, settled. That's it. Your fight of faith is whether you have value in Jesus' eyes or not. That is what the devil is warring over you. That's what this election is actually all about. How can you? Because I'm redefining people, this election says. Whatever humans are, I'm redefining it. Your fight is for the love of God in your life. And when you have that, when you're walking in it, is when people get set free. Ah, now I know what I'm going to speak. Thank you, Lord. I've got to be willing to step out and look like a fool and tell people, I don't know what I'm going to say. It doesn't mean that I don't have lots and lots and lots in me. It means I don't think I'm willing to just tell you something. Check the box. Okay, Lord, that makes sense now. Okay. I, I will say that he did put this in me, and I didn't want to speak it, really. Not because it's bad. I'm just like, eh, I don't know. But it won't leave. So, so let's go there. It's, it's Mark 10. It's, it's Jesus gets displeased here. And I just want to tell you the reference for us. Uh, Rachel, if you can keep up, great. If you can't, whatever. I'm good with that. He's, yeah, he's, he's talking to his people. And in Mark 10, verse 13, he says this. Um, and you're familiar with this part, too, because they brought little children to him. And now, see, all it starts to flood in you. Oh, okay, I know how this goes and stuff like that. But that's you. That's, that's me. That's how he refers to Israel. That's how he refers Jesus when he talks. See, little children, please come. That even little children get the crumbs and the bread and all the... That's how he talks. That's, that's his lingo. Whatever your age is and whatever mature or immature you think that you are... Or, or you've lived as an adult, but you're, you're a child. That, that's me. Can you we say that's me? You're a child, man. And the older I get, by the way, I'm good with that. No, I'm youthful. I'm a child. Oh, there it is. Then he brought the little children to him that he might touch them. My prayer for this church, which is for you and everyone who walks in this place, is not that you would have seen polished worship that was great or, or boy, the outside looks fairly good. It's fairly clean in here. Everyone's doing prim and proper. That's, I pray that you get touched. And I actually, I don't care if it's you got up from the greeters or something was said in worship, or someone said something. Maybe no one said anything to you. You just got this little impression on the inside. Maybe it was from the word, but that's my prayer. Everyone would be touched by Jesus. And it's the same thing here. They brought the children to him that he might touch them. That's church. Well, here's what happened. 
but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. And if you go into another version, it's like this, don't bother the master. That's my fight of faith. I am welcomed in God's presence. No, 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 don't bother the master. Your puny little life and the things that you do, your, what, what have you done? How, what great thing have you done that you can make it into God's presence? That is religion. That is a Pharisee thing. That's garbage. Say this with me. That's garbage. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. And he said to them, let the little children come to me. Don't forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. This is what he's saying to each one of us today. Get past that. If there was a disciple that said something wrong to you, get past it. Whatever, Maybe it needs to be vulnerable, and you've got to be vulnerable to get past that. And I'm sorry for whatever disciple said that and hurt you. But the kingdom of God belongs to you. Little child, come. Amen? He's displeased. It's not very often Jesus is displeased. And if you would check it out in the scriptures, it's always, you messing with my kids, did you keep my kids from me? Oh, for those that do that, he says this, it is better that a millstone would be thrown around their neck and they would be drowned. Oof! then you would hold back one of these little ones. That's me. That's, I'm the pastor, and I don't know everything that's going to happen. I'm like, I got to come to you as a child. If I'm going to give them anything, I got to come to you as I am. Amen? Remember when he made a whip and he drove them out? He wasn't ticked off because they changed the decor of the church. He was ticked off because they kept people from coming in and praying and meeting with him. You are so accepted in his presence with your issues. In fact, more so with your issues. Issues mean this. You're going to be vulnerable. There's change coming. I'm going to mess up the plans of the enemy really quick. Watch what I do. 30 seconds. I'll undo 30 of his years. Woo! Okay, he goes on. He says this, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you can be in church and miss it. How does a little child receive it? Oh, they're vulnerable. If they got to deal with stuff, they do. We made our kids do it, and I remember in preschool having to do it. One of my friends stole my rocket cycle that I was supposed to ride on. I still remember. He became my best friend, actually. He stole my rocket cycle, and so they had plastic bricks. So, you know, naturally, to get my cycle back, I took up a brick and whacked him in the head and got my cycle back. You know, that's just how you do things. And the teacher makes me go and say sorry. So, you know how kids do it? Like this. Like this. Sorry. Like that. Sorry. Like that. And he's like, it's okay. And he gave me the cycle, and we shared it. We went back and forth. We became best friends for our whole life. Yeah. Done deal. The kingdom of God belongs to kids like that. Who are first willing to worship. Willing to worship. In the book of Acts, when they were going to go out and they were going to do things and God was sending them out for the first time, I had to be terrified. It wasn't a friendly environment. It wasn't everything was Christian and off they go. Everything was Roman. They got no burn Christians, man. They don't have good time for you. And here the Holy Ghost is going like this, go. So they're like, what do we do? So what did they do? They prayed, and they, the Bible says this, they ministered to the Lord. What's that? They worshiped him. They did. They worshiped him. And in that worship, right after this, it says, then the Holy Spirit spoke. Separate for me these people. 
They didn't have it all together. There wasn't an apostolic power move. They worshiped. Their hearts got soft. They heard. Off they went. Amen? Now, yeah, this part's true. I was thinking about this all week. Jesus prays for these kids. He touches them, the Bible says, and he blesses them. That's church. If you have this environment, vulnerable people coming up, I want you more than I care about what person two seats back thinks of me. If you have that environment, you have freedom, you have liberty, you have the kingdom. Word gets out. Pretty soon people start to come. Why? Because there's freedom and there's liberty and people's lives are being changed. Every single time the kingdom of God comes, you don't have to ask people to come. They come. And here's what's going to happen here as well. Now look, look who it draws. Kids are getting touched. Kids are getting blessed. Kids are getting set free. And a draw is happening. And look who comes. Now as he's going out on the road, one came running and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, and one version actually says this, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit life? He's doing what I do, what we do. He's doing the checkbox, the ranking thing. Hey, he calls him good. Do you know why he's calling him good? Because he wants it back. You ever, you ever shoulder rub people? Morgan, you got to come. Okay. And this is shoulder rubbing. Like Morgan's, Morgan's like a super important guy. Everyone knows Morgan. Boy, when Morgan talks, he's awesome. Yeah. Right? In the pastor's circle, it's the same. There's the Uber pastor. And people feel good when they're seen with the Uber pastor. It's called shoulder rubbing. So you're like, you're not really there for them. You're there because you look good when you're with them. And you walk away feeling good. I'm with Morgan. And you can tell people afterwards, where were you? I was with Morgan. You know Morgan? Yeah, I know Morgan. We, we hung out. Thanks, Morgan. Now, I've done it. I've done it at big pastor's circles, all that kind of stuff, where, you know, not only are you seen, but then you want to be seen. You want to be seen with the Uber pastors like that. It's, it's not like that now anymore. It, and and the, the reality is this for us now. Our relationship with pastors is 100 times better than it's ever been. And because we've just went, oh, God, it doesn't matter, as if that makes us any better people. Since we've done that, he puts us, he's given us such outrageous favor that we're usually shocked that people who are, they're pretty like, whoa, they're up there. Come up, hug us, hang on to us, remember us, remember Lac Labiche, all these kind of things. And what we're left with afterwards is we're actually humbled. Because, wow, those are awesome people who have been through war and they remember us. That's amazing. And you, you're just humbled. So here's this rich young ruler, and he's doing that. Good teacher, what good things should I do that I may inherit eternal life? <laughs> Which is a setup. He's not wanting the answer. He's seeing that there's liberty and freedom. I can do it too. When there's liberty and freedom, I'll look for another way to get free other than the prescribed route that Jesus says, no, it costs you. Did you put up 2 Corinthians 5.17? Did you do that yet? Did I read it? I didn't? Okay. Okay, Rach, bring it back. Bring it back, Rach. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you're a new creation. Boy, that just nailed us when we got saved. I, you know, I tried to remember scripture. I, I think I can only remember in one year three. That was it. But that was one. Because they're just words until they become real. I'm a new creation. 
old things, the way I used to do things, it really has passed away. All things have become new. I don't want to go back. So this guy with Jesus was looking for the freedom that was happening without having to go the route, without having to become a new creation. And so Jesus meets him right there, and he's willing to talk his lingo. He talks like you. Amen? As condemning on yourself as you think when you're having a bad day, and when she's on her quad cussing it out and doing all that kind of stuff and, and upset, and you think, I am such a poor Christian, he talks your language, and he's so good with you being real. And if you read this wrong... It's a spanking and a religified moment because the proper Jesus has met this man. No, Jesus is being real and talks his lingo because he knows this guy is trying to get by in all of his merits and everyone he knows. He says to him, first, why do you call me good? There's no one good. In other words, dude, you don't got to do that. You don't have to do that. But then he's, I'm going to talk your lingo. And he says, you know the commandments. Because this is what this guy does, checklist. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And so the guy says to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Liar. Let's say this together. Pants on fire. He doesn't. Amen. I want to show you something because we've done it too, and I do it too. By the way, I don't know. How many of you have broken the commandments this week? Yeah, there you just broke one. Yeah. Here's the core. Here's the core of where we're at. We get stuck in this pretty bad. And if you're going to keep one of the laws, you're in debt to keep them all, Jesus says. If you're going to go that route to try and keep the law and be perfect, you must be absolutely perfect. But then he said this, by the way, there's no one who's good. You all mess it up, all of you. All fall short. But then there's this really cool thing. That's why I came. Because you can't. I'm good with it. Okay, so the guy's really religious, says, I'm great and I'm good. Jesus knows that he's stuck there. Look what he says to him in verse 21. I've, I've just been stuck here for so long because why didn't I see it before? Then Jesus looking at him, what does that say? Can you guys see it? You don't have it up. I'm ahead in the spirit. I'm prophetically ahead of you all. Just wait. Okay, here we are. Jesus looking at him, say that loud, please, out loud. This is the greatest revelation for me. I can't tell you how many times I've screwed it up. Thought a thought I shouldn't think. Said something to someone I should not have. Stole by maybe criticizing someone. That's stealing. By saying something nasty, I've murdered them. I don't know how many times I've screwed up. And every time I screw up, the first thing that hits me is this feeling of failure. That I've failed somehow in God's righteous standards. He did too. Especially because he lied. And do you know what Jesus' response was? Loved him. Loved him. Boy, you're in good company. Go ahead and look around. Go ahead. I don't mind. Go ahead. And you can look up here because I have failed the commandments this week. <laughs> Amen? And thank you for uh, Sylvia's courage as well because she has failed the commandments as well. And you want to know Jesus' response? And I speak this right into the face of you, you stinky religion. The Lord rebuke you. You stink. You smell. I pray that that smell would go forth every time religion comes forward. And the love of God 
would come forward and saturate that beautiful fragrance of Jesus upon every single person. Every time they mess up, they would meet with the truth of your word. You love them. He tells him, you're only lacking one thing, he says. Now listen to this. He says, go. Do you have it up there? I should actually have my glasses on, then we'll get the right thing. Thank you. One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, give to the poor. You're going to have treasure in heaven, and come take up your cross and follow me. That's usually in the church that I was in that I tuned out right there. And we're done. I was with you right up till that point, because here's what I heard. You're going to be poor and broke. That's godly. Did he say that? One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, give to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven. Come take up the cross and follow me. I tuned out right there and I wouldn't hear anything else. Because all I heard is this, the religious thing in church. If you own anything, you suck. If you got money, you're at a deficit. Jesus hated those ones. Oh, if you've got possessions, the Lord rebuke you. Only poverty is holy. Amen. Pants on fire. We're going to just get to this last part, and then, and then we're going we're gonna to just stop. Because he goes on to this. Um, at this word, he went away, and he's very sorrowful, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around, and he said to disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter into the kingdom of God. The disciples were astonished at his words. Jesus answered and said to them, children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. Now, I'll add to that. Trust in your stature. How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. What's, what does that even mean? There's, go stand up there, Angie, right, and face us. She was one of the first ones who had the guts to, to step out and be vulnerable and just say, God, I got bitterness in my heart. When I'm holding on, trusting in my stature, and though I want to come up there, I won't. Because it's, no, it's too much of a gamble. I can't lose my stature. And yet Jesus is saying this. Here's not the rebuke. Here's the answer. He's saying this. How hard it is for those who trust in stature or anything to enter the kingdom of God. He's not saying you're bad, you're out. He's just saying it's really hard when you're trusting in anything else but God to enter into that freedom, the kingdom of God that's right there for you. Well, why is he saying riches? How hard it is for those who trust in the riches because they can't let it go because they think it's their security. Well, it's not mine. Well, only 17% of all the churches around here tithe. Well, no, well, it's the same for everyone. It's all, it's all relative, trusting in God, and that's why he did it. In fact, he said, here's a large one. It's called mammon. Well, that's, that's love of money. No, that's trusting in whatever amount, a lot or little you have, and you can't let it go because you must hold on to this or things won't go well. And Jesus said, actually, it's completely the opposite. If you're willing to release this, I can trust you with so much more. And I'm not asking for everything. I'm only asking for this much. Been there. And just because I'm a tither now doesn't mean I don't struggle with trusting in my own stature until someone like this leads the way. And I'm like, ah, I got to go. Now I got to go. My wife just went there before me. Yeah. So either way, I was kind of stuck in stature. If I don't go, I look bad, you know. And I just went, whatever. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Now, I'll, I'll share. I'll be vulnerable with you. One of the the... Pentecostal things that kind of freaks me out sometimes is when joy hits. And do I love laughing? Oh, you bet, I do. I actually have a good sense of humor. I like to laugh. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I like that. Uh, but when all the dancing breaks out, I'm hopelessly white 
And so my dancing is kind of ugly, and <laughs> it looks like, come on, God, over, come over me or something. Make this look good. So, so I, don't, I, I don't always want to be where that's happening, you know. I want the joy. I want the, I'm not always that great at the dancing part, and it makes me feel uncomfortable. And there's at one point where I, I just feel the Lord, and they're worshiping, and I just feel the Lord saying, you've got to get closer to the front. And so I'm like, okay, I'll go up. And there's a, there's a pastor there. And he just goes like this, grabs hold of me. And he's not letting go. And he's hanging on to me. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do this. And this is right at the front, by the way. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then another pastor comes to me on the other side. And whoop, he holds on to me like this. And then another one comes up and hugs me like this. So I've got two pastors hanging on to me. And I can't go anywhere. And what do you think they announce from up front that's going to happen? There's joy. There's joy. And I'm like, no. And what I, do you know how bad it would look at that point if I shook these guys off and just went, I'm out of here. And, and I just thought to myself, that's just like you, God. And, and some people have said this before, Jehovah Sneaky. You know, he gets you up there. He draws you up there. And when he gets you up there, you know what he's looking for in me? He wasn't looking for me to dance. He was looking for me to be vulnerable. That was it. And even the pastor who's beside me, He's, he, he's going like this. He says, he says, you know, if you stay up here, you might have to dance. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, well, you won't let me go, so how can I not stay here? So I, I remember just saying to the Lord at that point, so we all started to do our little groove thing. I, I remember just saying to the Lord, first I was thinking, you're sneaky. And second, I just went, whatever, God so what? If this is the air of vulnerability, and if this will take me further with you, then let's do this, God. And it didn't actually go there. It went a different direction. Thank you. <laughs> but he's looking for not my check mark. That's not how you please God. You do it by trusting. Now, here's what we're just going to end with. Um, you can sit. Thank you, hon. The whole, the whole trusting and riches because there's that place in us where we think, I can't. I can't. And God rarely does this, but he does in Mark. Go down to verse 29, please, Rachel. God rarely does this, but here he does. Because he's talking. Peter comes up to him and he says, look, we've left everything and we've followed you. And so Jesus answers and says this, assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left, he's going to say this, basically, vulnerable. He says, no one. Now, it's impossible for God to lie. There's no one, say no one, who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life, you can have it all. You're not going to lack. You're not. And he rarely gives, gives the consolation, but he did. And even though you think, I can't trust you, and I can't, whatever it is I can't trust you with, here's God saying this, no, a hundred times more in this life. Persecutions, everything that go with it, but boy, your cost is being vulnerable and real before him. He's not looking for your stature. Amen? Now, we can confess that in our own personal lives, I don't know if it's a hundred times, but from what we had before Jesus to what he has blessed us with, not that that's what it's about. I, there's no way I could have done what he's done for us. No possible way. He's so faithful. I'm going to invite you to stand up and just drop your stature. This has nothing to do with check marks. This has nothing to do with accomplishing it. Do you receive that word today? Yeah. Go ahead. Give God a clap, please.
I, I just, I could have, we could have spoken so many, there's so much to say. But there's only, unless a man encounters the Lord, he remains largely unchanged. And if it's been a long time since you've encountered the Lord, then I want to tell you, you're in really good company. Because there's a hunger that's going out right now. And it has been, it started a little while ago, but it's going out to people and they're feeling this draw back to the house of God. Except things aren't the way that they used to be anymore. But there's also a war over you. Hide, no come. Hide, no come. Be proper, no come. It's not safe, no. There's no safer place on earth. No one can take you out of his hand. Jesus, I pray for the hearts of the people. I pray for their hearts, Jesus, that they may truly, really, God, know you. You say that there's a love, that it goes past everything. It's, it goes past understanding. You say it's, how can you know it? It's from the east and the west and the north, the heights, the width, the, the, the breadth, all of these. And yet, Lord, you say that we can know you. I pray for wisdom and revelation and understanding to hit everyone's heart. And Lord, that we could all see the foolishness that the enemy's doing. That we could all see it. It'd be so plain to us. It, 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 that's division. I don't want that. That's, that's not you, Jesus. I, I don't want that. That thing that I used to look at, it just, I don't want that anymore, Lord. It, it's not because it's the right thing to do, but it's because I met you and I'm changed. I'm this new creation now and, and the old things are done. I, I, I just want to be with you. I pray, Lord Jesus, for that wisdom and understanding that we would know our true value in your presence, that we would know that we are so crazy loved by you and that the things that we struggle with are just the accusations of the enemy and they're so small and you're so big. So I prophesy right now, old things are coming off old ways of understanding, old ways of being mad at ourselves and thinking that we're not enough. It's old, it's old. Dog won't hunt, it's done. Shoot the dog. That old dog's done. I'm not good enough. It's old. It's old. I don't belong. It's old. It's so old. I messed up this week. It's old. Everyone messed up this week. Jesus sees all my sins. I can't. He's always seen all your sins. But he's not looking at those. He's looking at you. He's already removed them. There's a moment right now. Let's say this together. Say, Jesus, the real Jesus, I ask you, Come into my heart. Now, I welcome you. Give me courage. Thank you, Lord. It's okay to be silent and just let him talk to your inside. Real church, Lord. and they are bold <laughs> they've left all their shame behind 
they've left all their baggage behind and they run like gazelles they have hinds feet it's called and they leap over mountains who can stop this tremendous army of the Lord for they just believe that they're his kids and they love him and he loves them with a crazy love that's the offer that's the offer that's the offer trouble. That's the offer. Would you be a part of his army today? Would you be a part of his army? He's not looking at what you've done, what you can do to be a part. He's looking for you to be real. service like this. If you would like to go and enjoy uh, just hanging out out front, you can do that. If you need to go home, bless the Lord, you can do that. If you would like to stay in his presence, you already know that you're welcome. And if you'd like to come up to the front and lay closer because you want to be closer, you're welcome to do that as well. In what you do today, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But we must give a praise clap before we do anything. Can we give a praise clap for the Lord?